everyone this is the much Ray black today we're gonna react to a death battle all might versus might guy let's watch Smash, yeah. 
to determine the power of this epic blow, let's find the volume of the resulting whirlwind by comparing its size to the nearby buildings. Applying the standard height of 3 meters per floor, the whirlwind appears to be at least 2,200 meters tall, giving it a volume of over 10 billion cubic meters. To create a tornado that large, All Might Strike must have equaled a force of over 11,000 tons of TNT. Dang. That's insane! He's got the power of an atomic bomb in his bare fist! He's also fast enough to run down this stairway in less than half a second. A feat which, given the distance measured, means he can move 29 times faster than sound. He's in the same league as the supervillain Gigantomachia, who blew up a mountain, and he punched this Nomu guy so hard, he pulled a team rocket. Looks like Nomu's blasting up again! With so much power, All Might remained the number one hero for years. Unfortunately, success doesn't last forever. Yeah, he got into a fight that was a bit bigger than even he could handle, and got injured pretty bad. So bad, in fact, it became difficult for him to use his powers, and drastically limited his full strength. But hey, don't worry, for Death Battle, we look at each character's peak performance across their whole life. Right, when fighting Nomu, All Might claimed that what he pulled off in 300 punches, he could have previously done with just five. Back in my heyday, five hits would have been enough to knock that guy out. But today, it took more than 300 mighty blows. Taken literally, this means All Might at his best was 60 times more powerful. But even as a crippled old man, he held on to the number one spot for a long time. Not because he was taking out more bad guys than the competition, but because he was just so goddamn heroic. At least until he could find a new successor with a smile on his face. A shining example of what it means to be a true hero, just like himself. <laughs> In Konohagakure, the village hidden in the leaves, ninja train to use the mysterious arts of ninjutsu and genjutsu. It's basically ninja magic. Everything from shooting fireballs to messing with your brain. But some ninja just aren't suited to these difficult techniques. During young Rock Lee's time at the academy, he feared his lacking in these arts meant he would never accomplish his dream of becoming a ninja. And then he met the one, the only, the bushy, Might Guy! How you doing, everybody? Like you, you good? Guy is one of the most respected and powerful ninja among the Hidden Leaf, but he certainly didn't start out that way. Yeah, he and his dad could never really make all that ninja magic work for them, so they decided to focus on the one thing they were good at, punching people. This is Taijutsu, or the ninja art of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Dedicating himself to this form over all else, Guy soon became a master in the Taijutsu style of strong fix. Which translates to punching people really, really hard. It's a fighting style that is literally all about breaking bones. Yeah, I'll take that over ninja magic, thank you. That's not to say Guy couldn't perform uh, ninja magic. He's just not very skilled in it. At all. Yeah, like a bunch of ninja can summon cool shit like tracking hounds or giant toads. Guy can summon a turtle. That, that's about it. But mastering the strong fist style is a testament to Guy's ability. Only the toughest people in the world can use it at all. Otherwise, it's, uh, super dangerous. That's the big thing with Guy's style. Because he's got to make up for not having ninja magic, everything he does comes with a big risk. Especially his ultimate technique. Right, Guy's father, Mike Guy, was instrumental in helping him achieve the goal of becoming a, quote, splendid ninja. But he also taught him a skill which would prove to be both of their undoing. The Eight Gates. Wait, 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 wait. Someone named their kid Mike Die? What, are you just hedging your bet for the future? I mean, Die is dead. Well, then I guess they called it. The Eight Gates refer to the pathways within the human body which contain the flow of chakra, the life energy ninja use for their techniques. And, you know, to live. To simplify, by opening each gate, Guy essentially removes inhibitors on his body, greatly increasing his power, speed, and capabilities. The first few gates are kind of safe, unlocking 100% of the body's ability. The second one even heals you a bit. But once you get past number four, things start getting real messy. At this point, Guy suffers horrible pain and severe muscle tearing. While the power increase is certainly worth the risk in a difficult fight, it's likely to put the user in the hospital afterwards. Now, 
after opening the sixth gate, he can move so fast his punches ignite the air around him, meaning he can shoot fireballs from his fists. That would be the morning peacock technique. To ignite the hydrogen in the air, guy must be swinging at speeds more than 40,000 kilometers per hour. That's over five times faster than the X-15 rocket jet, the fastest airplane in the modern world. And once he opens the seventh gate, he can perform Daytime Tiger, where he throws a giant tiger's face at you. Hell yeah! This beautiful beast is strong enough to blow up an island! Awesome. While opening the seventh gate would prove fatal for most ninja, Guy is strong enough and skilled enough to wield it without such concern. However, when it comes to the final gate, there is no going back. With the eighth gate of death, Guy's power explodes. His blood boils, evaporating from his body. Yeah, if you thought that was some Super Saiyan energy aura around him there, think again. It's his blood burning through his skin. Hardcore. Gross, but hardcore. In this mode, Guy can perform the speedy evening elephant technique. But his most impressive ability is, without a doubt, Night Guy. Okay, Mike Guy, Mike Die, and Night Guy? Who's coming up with this shit? This attack was powerful enough to decimate Madara, one of the deadliest villains in the Naruto universe. Madara could take on Naruto, who had enough chakra to blow a hole through the moon. Sure, Night Guy is still not as powerful as Naruto once the kid goes all gold and flowy, but it's definitely above Jiraiya's big ball Rasengan carving up a mountain, or Obito raising up a giant tree like a crazy reverse lumberjack. Despite all this risk, Guy proved himself an equal to some of the greatest ninja of the Hidden Leaf, including his longtime rival Kakashi, who was fast enough to catch lightning from a distance. Measuring the space Kakashi had to cover here and the speed of lightning itself, he must have moved over 700,000 meters per second, more than 2,000 times faster than sound. But in the end, even though he knew the Eighth Gate meant the ultimate sacrifice, he did it anyway like a boss to protect his friends. He did get lucky, though, because Ninja Jesus showed up to keep him alive. Good timing. No wonder he's always got a smile on his face. But handicapped from then on, Guy's days of combat were finally over. At least for the time being. Still, even if this was to be his last mission, Guy had already found a worthy successor. A shining example of what it means to be a splendid ninja. Just like himself. are set and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, you can get a superhero for yourself to protect your computer and online data, and it's called ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is a powerful, trustworthy service that protects your privacy and security every time you use the internet, whether you're gaming, streaming video, buying something online, or just browsing the web. What's a VPN, you ask? It protects your computer from outside hackers and spying websites by encrypting your data and using a secure server. Most people are using VPNs these days, even me. ExpressVPN is particularly useful for gaming, giving shorter connection routes that can reduce ping times and overall lag. And as a bonus, you can also use a server in a different country. This is super handy when I found a video I really wanted to watch, but it was blocked in the U.S. But in just a click with ExpressVPN, I'm using a server in Canada. Or anywhere else I want to be. Well, ExpressVPN has servers in 94 countries, so I guess you'll have plenty of options. They've got apps for every device out there. Windows, iOS, Android, Mac, even the Linux Penguin is getting in on it. Take back your internet privacy today. And find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box or going to expressvpn.com slash battle. That's expressvpn.com slash battle. But right now, it's time for a death battle!
people of peace. Nice one. Oh. This one all might. You can take a hit well, but what are you really made of? Mm. Nice one, Mike guy. Ooh. It's an awesome battle. Mm. Who's going to win? So for this comparison, we multiplied each result by 60 as per All Might's own estimation of his power. For example, remember how he was similar to Gigantomachia who busted a hole through a freaking mountain? By scaling the mountain to the pine trees beneath it, it's easy to deduce the blast necessary for this would be about 2.5 gigatons of TNT. With the multiplier, that would be 150 gigatons in All Might's prime. That's 3,000 times stronger than the biggest nuke that's ever been set off. But here's the thing. Even with the multiplier, we know Guy was faster. And while they both learned to fight a wide variety of opponents, Guy was trained all his life and boasted a more versatile set of abilities and techniques. So with that much speed and skill, Guy already had a pretty good advantage. So long as he could hit All Might harder than All Might could hit him. So to answer that, let's check their strongest attacks. All Might's greatest known feat would be the moment his smash created a massive storm, one that extended beyond the horizon. 
by taking the average mass of a thunderstorm, which is huge, and the 10 seconds it took for All Might Smash to create it. This comes out to a little over 24 gigatons of TNT. In his prime, this punch would equal over 1,440 gigatons. 28,000 times stronger than the biggest nuke from just one punch! Holy hell! Unfortunately, it's impossible to lock down a specific number in this way for Guy's strongest attack, Night Guy. However, we can scale them to similar characters we know to be at lesser levels. In this case, base form Naruto. God damn, we can never get away from this little twerp, can we? Well, Night Guy did serious damage to Madara, whom Naruto's normal abilities stood no chance against. Obviously, Naruto gains a lot more power when he accesses Sage Mode, Karama's Chakras, Six Paths Powers, etc. But Night Guy is certainly more powerful than Naruto's base form at the end of the series. You know that hole in the moon we mentioned? That was made by pulling all of Naruto's base chakra out of his body and blowing it up. And I mean all of it. Most of his chakra has been siphoned off. We've actually covered this before, and that blast was 480 petatons of TNT. What's a petaton, you ask? Well, it's a whole lot bigger than a gigaton, that's for sure. Simply put, the gap in power put Guy several leagues above All Might. Also, Guy's superior speed ensured All Might couldn't avoid such a blow when it really mattered. Like, you know, in, in a fight to the death. And yeah, Guy using the 8th gate means he'll die later, but he still won the battle before that would happen. And that's still a victory. All Might was remarkably powerful and certainly a challenge for Guy. But with his gates open, Guy had the speed, versatility, and power to take him out for good. It was a mighty tough battle for all, but All Might wasn't a match for one powerful guy. The winner is Might Guy. If you like this death battle, give a thumbs up and I'll see you on my next reaction. This is the Montre Black. Peace.